In 1991, the World Health Organization acknowledged that the predominant source of human exposure to mercury is from your fillings. That should be of concern to anyone. So all mercury silver fillings leak substantial amounts of mercury constantly. The amount increases with any kind of stimulation, and as a result, mercury from fillings produces the majority of human exposure to mercury. The International Academy of Oral Medicine and Toxicology is extremely concerned about the anecdotal claims of safety by manufacturers and dental trade associations. They're at variance with the published, peer-reviewed scientific evidence to the contrary. The precautionary principle requires action once the possibility of harm exists. It does not require proof beyond a shadow of a doubt that in the case of heavy metal and xenobiotic exposure is both nearly impossible and unnecessary in our opinion. What you're seeing is mercury vapor coming off a 25-year-old silver amalgam filling in an extracted tooth. The background is a phosphorescent screen. The mercury vapor absorbs the fluorescent light and you can see it as a shadow on the screen. This is mercury coming off a filling that was dipped in water that's the same temperature as the human body. This is a filling that was rubbed with a pencil eraser for just a few seconds. Like going to the hygienist and having her clean your teeth. These are not small amounts of mercury. If you can see it, it's more than 1,000 times higher than the Environmental Protection Agency will allow for the air that we breathe. What about the last time you went to the dentist and they drilled on your tooth? Here is the mercury vapor every time you raise the temperature to 110 degrees with hot coffee or warm water or even chewed on it. Mercury comes off fillings every time you stimulate them and that stimulation causes the mercury to continue to leak out of the fillings for an hour and a half at a minimum. Some people grind their teeth. Some people chew gum. The dentist might send an old gold crown to the dental lab to be welded. How about the dental personnel? They're not being given informed consent. Back in 1985, the International Academy of Oral Medicine Toxicology set out to determine the amount of mercury that was coming off fillings. And here's the graph. Showing substantial quantities of mercury were measured coming off fillings. And then we estimated the total dose. And then we began animal experiments and put radioactive fillings in sheep. Mercury accumulated in the jaw, stomach, liver, and kidney of the sheep in just 30 days. Substantial quantities of mercury spread from the fillings to every organ in that sheep's body. Then we measured that the sheep's kidneys dropped in their ability by 60% to clear inulin, an indication of kidney malfunction. Whole body imaging of monkeys found exactly the same thing. Proponents of amalgam fillings claim that sheep chew too much. Well, what's the problem with monkeys? They had mercury in their jaw, kidneys, liver, intestine, and heart. And further research found dystrophic bacteria that were antibiotic resistant cropped up in the intestines within two weeks of receiving these mercury leaking fillings. Further studies have found damage to the ADP ribosylation of brain neuron proteins. In response to the controversy and at the request of the Federation of Experimental Scientists and Biologists, Drs. Fritz Scheider and Murray Vimy wrote an editorial, the first ever in FACIB, that point by point refuted the claims of the amalgam proponents. That should be of concern to anyone wanting to have healthy children because mercury is highly damaging to fetuses. Experiments in sheep showed that mercury from the sheep's fillings transferred immediately to the placenta, to the unborn fetus, and to every conceivable portion of the fetus's body. It even increased in the lamb higher after birth from mercury in the mother's milk. There's no such thing as a safe mercury filling. All mercury fillings leak mercury. The combined effect of mercury, cadmium, and lead is just now being investigated, but it's not one in one. It's synergistic, and one in one may make 100 or even 1,000. Why is that of concern? Over and over again, 
we've heard that children are exposed to lead from our environment. Mercury and lead is many times more toxic than just mercury alone. These black, corroded, pitted mercury fillings are used where you must drill away a third of the tooth in order to fix a pinhead sized cavity. Even if you love mercury, it's the wrong thing to do to the children. It leads to broken, diseased, root canal, extracted teeth throughout the rest of the life. It's a blunder that costs the child all through their life. Millions and millions of dollars are spent annually fixing teeth again and again. And dentists don't follow the manufacturer's recommendations. They pack mercury in children around gold crowns, underneath bridges. They stuff it around the gum line in contact with tissues. There's mercury spreading from this gold crown to every tissue in that patient's body. Even if you like mercury fillings, putting that kind of filling in the tooth is simply the wrong thing to do. Harold Lowe, the former director of the National Institute of Dental Research back in 1993, wrote, the first filling is a critical step in the life of a tooth. Using amalgam for the first filling requires removing a lot of tooth substance, not only disease tooth substance, but healthy tooth substance as well. So in making the undercuts, you sacrifice a lot, and this results in a weakened tooth. The next thing you know, the tooth breaks off, and you need a crown. Then you need to repair the crown. And so it continues to the stage where there's no more to repair, and you pull the tooth. With the first filling, you should do something that can either restore the tooth or retain more healthy tooth substance. Use new materials, composites, or materials that can bond to the surface without undercuts. You can do this with little removal of the tooth substance so that the core of the tooth is still there. I would add that the cost of all that dental repair over and over again makes the cost of mercury fillings enormous even if you don't consider the neurological impairment and the brain damage that they surely cause in dental personnel and the infertility and the heartbreak that they've caused to so many families. It is the opinion of this academy that responsible government agencies should prohibit the use of these fillings until such time as their manufacturers produce the alleged evidence of safety. These instructions can be found on the webpage of the International Academy of Oral Medicine and Toxicology. I would recommend that you review them and have your dentist do the same before commencing any procedures involving mercury.